One of George Washington's closest friends might arguably be responsible for inducing his premature death. Medical quackery was at its prolific height and worse throughout his lifetime. Washington was still a vigorous man at the age of 67, only two years removed from the American presidency. On December 12, 1799, he spent the entire day on horseback supervising farm activities. The weather turned frigid and it began to snow. Upon returning to his residence, he did not change out of his wet clothing. Instead, he went directly to dinner and then bed. He woke up at 2 a.m. with a severe and inflammatory throat infection, today diagnosed as epiglottomus. A team of personal physicians was summoned, including Dr. James Craik, his personal physician. Epiglottis enables respiration but inhibits swallowing. Contemporary medicine would eradicate the disease with antibiotics that would kill the infection. The physicians initially had him gargle a liquid mixture of molasses, vinegar, and butter. As he was unable to swallow, their remedy proved useless. Craig suggested a more radical approach common for the era. The doctors bled Washington until he had lost approximately 40% of his blood. Craig and another consulting doctor, Gustavus Richard Brown, had earlier overruled Dr. Alicia Dick's recommendation of a trachonotomy. The procedure might have saved Washington's life, but could have spread the infection and induced septus. The bloodletting treatment weakened him severely. He lacked the strength to battle the infection and regressively weakened. He passed away on the evening of December 14th and was buried four days later in the family vault at Mount Vernon. Craig has been generally absolved from historical responsibility. His medical advice would have been commonly offered by most physicians of his era.